Welcome to Transfer Live. This is John Barnett speaking today on disciplining ourselves for godliness. That phrase actually comes right here from the Bible from 1 Timothy 4, 7. In fact, when I was invited to speak on this, I thought that, this, that concept of disciplining ourselves for godliness is most of what the epistles are about. The metaphor of the New Testament is so much the athletic, the, the self-disciplined Greek body that was totally under the command of the, the total Greek person. And Paul surveys that culture and reduces it down to this, this one verse in 1 Timothy 4, 7, two imperatives, which really have been for me a foundation of my life. It, it says, but reject, and in the Greek language, the way you emphasize something is not by raising your voice, but by a little ending, uh, A-T-E ending on the end of a word, and it becomes an imperative. That's a command. So God, through Paul, says to every believer, reject profane and old wives' fables, muthas, myths, things that aren't true, profane things that aren't godly. And he says, I am supposed to be a rejecter of those things. It's almost like ping pong. As soon as it comes at you, you knock it away. It, it's my life is to be rejecting anything profane. That means it's not sacred. And anything that's an old wives' tale. Um, you know, our lives are so short. Why invest precious time in things that are false, worthless, etc.? But now let's get to the positive. Reject all that stuff. That, that's just, you know, a command. But then he says, it's not enough to just get rid of stuff. Remember Jesus said when, you, when the demon was cast out, if you don't put something in, more demons will come? He says, don't just clean out profane and old wives' fables, but exercise yourself toward godliness. That's discipline. Godliness is not something that happens. It is something that we choose, that we're commanded to exercise ourselves toward. Now, that whole word exercise is where I talked about the New Testament metaphors. Um, the Christian life is described in the New Testament epistles by the Apostle Paul, who, by the way, was a wordsmith. The Apostle Paul took words and formed them, kind of like if you know the German language, a Kugelschreiber or something like that. It's the idea that you take two words, and when you join them, it makes a picture. Everybody yeah, I could have thought of that myself. Well, Paul does that, describing the Christian life as being an agony. That, that's one of his great words, an agon, uh, an athletes. Uh, agony means a struggle. Athletes means a competition, that, that we're competing in a race, and the Lord is at the finish line, and he set the rules. Uh, us being wrestlers, he says, I, I wrestle against not just flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Another one, uh, boxing. All of these were the disciplines of the athletics of the Greek world. And Paul said, we're supposed to incorporate those athletic metaphors into this exercising ourselves toward godliness. Now, let me just give you one example. In my personal life, and um, maybe it'll communicate to you. In, in my life, when I think about my spiritual life, I think about the fact that I'm so much like my dad. I'm so much like probably his dad. In fact, I was born into a line of alcoholics. In fact, my wife was a bartender and an alcoholic for she was saved. And so, I mean, I even married a former alcoholic. And so the, this whole background, alcoholism, drug addiction, anything else, is when we don't discipline ourselves, we allow something else to control us instead of us, through the power of the Spirit of God, denying our flesh. And so I grew up seeing so many of the tendencies of my father in my life. In fact, I was disciplined most often when I was a little boy by my dad grabbing me around the neck, lifting me off the ground, holding me, feet dangling, squeezing my neck and saying, if you do that again, I'll break your neck and dropping me. And what I thought when I crumpled to the floor is, I don't want to be like that when I grow up. But I found out as I grew up, I became exactly like that. Because without the positive effect of us learning to discipline ourselves for godliness that the Bible talks about, we will become just like the worst of whatever we come from. Our flesh is always at work. 
So what Paul says is, doesn't matter whether you're from my background, the alcoholic, angry family, or if you're from the proud, self-righteous family, we are supposed to exercise ourselves toward godliness. How do we do that? Well, I'll turn to one more verse, and uh, uh, I know that your time watching this is limited, and so my time speaking is limited too. But this is what it says in Titus 2, one of my favorite books. In fact, the book of Titus is the only curriculum that the Bible gives that's for every age group in the church. It's the only place anywhere in the New Testament that every age group is mentioned. It says the older men, the older women, the younger women, the younger men. And if you're not one of those four, you're nothing, right? You're not alive, you're a chair. So it says here, you're supposed to teach the older men, women, younger men, and younger women this, that the grace of God that brought salvation, now listen to verse 12, chapter 2 of Titus, teaches us to deny ungodliness. I hear people all the time say they're under grace, and that's code for they can do whatever they want. God says, if you're really saved, that the same grace that saved you, Titus 2.11, teaches us that I have to learn to deny ungodliness. Paul, remember the wordsmith made up all these words? Do you know what he said? He said, flee youthful lust. Do you know what the word flee is? It's the word fugo. It's where we get fugitive from. I'm supposed to be a fugitive from my flesh. You know what a fugitive is? They just don't have any place to land. They're always on the run. Anywhere my old me, the way I used to be, shows up, I flee from it. I deny it. I, I say that God's grace has taught me to deny that. Instead of saying that's just the way I am, that's an excuse. I meet people all the time say, I lost my temper. No, you didn't. You found it. It's been with you all along. You have got to learn what the scriptures say, to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, to live soberly. Soberly is under the restraint of the Spirit of God. It's, it's having a whole, doesn't mean you're Puritan dower. It means there's a divine restraint over your life. The scriptures say that's our responsibility. We have the Holy Spirit's power. We are regenerated. That means we have a brand new operating system. It, I am a brand new me in an old case. The very core, the, the, the processor of my being in November of 1962, on my knees with my mother, was replaced, that operating system, when Jesus Christ saved me. Regeneration means there's a brand new operating system. But the problem is, the Bible says we're still in the old case our flesh. And our flesh is trying to squelch, it's trying to contaminate, it's trying to inhibit the new us. And what we have to say is that because of regeneration, I'm a new creation. Because of justification, God looks at me in such a way there's nothing I can do to make him love me more, love me less. There is nothing I can do to cause him to turn his his love toward me away. And so what I am left with, tasked with, is just taking all he's given me, his grace, his love, and his spirit living within, and do what 1 Timothy 4, 7 says, that I'm supposed to discipline myself for godliness. Now, if I was a runner, and I was going to become a disciplined runner, you know what I'd do? I'd get out and I'd start running a little more every day. If I was going to be a swimmer, I'd swim one lamp, and then two the next day, and three the next day. If you're going to discipline yourself for godliness, the Bible talks about the disciplines of a godly person's life. Do you know what they are? Jesus exhibited them all. Jesus was one who got up a great while before day to commune with God. Every great person in the Bible and in church history has been a man or a woman of devotion. Not of a mechanical devotion, of a devotion to Christ. So if I'm going to discipline myself for godliness, I've got to get that devotion down. Prayer. Jesus prayed. He, he'd pray all night. He, he, would, he would pray before his big events. Me, I would sleep to get stronger. Jesus prayed to get stronger. So we have to have the discipline of devotion. Is where We have to have the discipline of prayer. Jesus said, if you follow me out of you, come rivers of living water, the Holy Spirit. We have to have the discipline of being full of the Spirit. It's kind of like my battery and my cell phone. I'm always checking to make sure it's charged up. Are you aware when you're full of the Spirit and not? It's supposed to be my responsibility. I'm, I'm supposed to get this package disciplined for godliness. 
Nothing new. Jesus is a pattern. He was in the Word. He was in prayer. He memorized the scriptures. When he faced off with the devil, he didn't take his Bible. He had it memorized, and he quoted it back to the devil. I always tell people, you better memorize, because sooner or later you're going to be laying in a hospital bed. When you get there, they take away your glasses and your rings and your wallet and your clothes, and they put that funny gown on you, and they put a in your mouth, and you have a respirator, and you're going to be all alone. And only the verses you've memorized are you going to cling to. Paul said, you got a choice in life. Discipline yourself for godliness. It's an imperative. And the scriptures give us the picture. And it's Jesus Christ. And he's the one that died to make it possible, moved in to give us the power, left us the picture in his word, and commanded us, it's your responsibility. Discipline yourself for godliness. That's what God wants for each of us today.